Welcome to the Art and Business of Writing podcast. I'm your host, Chris Jones, and I have with me a new co-host, author Kayla Thomas. Kayla will be on the show with me every week as we go deeper into the art side of writing. Uh, you'll get all the same great interviews you've always enjoyed. We're just adding a second show into the mix to give you more of the creative. Hey, Kayla, what's happening? Oh, not much. I'm excited to be here this week. Thanks for bringing me in. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a really, really good time. So uh, what are you working on these days? Right now, I am working on a sequel to my novel, Tackling Summer, and doing a bunch of marketing and things for um, my novels going into the Christmas season. Wow, dude, that's that's great. I, I find this time of year a lot more difficult to write, despite like the push from Nano, which I did try and I did kind of crash and burn this year, but I do find this time of year a little bit more difficult to write than others. I agree, and and I I'm with you. I crashed and burned with Nano too. <laughs> <laughs> now today's topic, what we're going to talk about in today's show, uh, is productivity hacks for the busy holiday season. You know, we all know about the hustle and bustle of the holidays, especially people who have kids. If you got kids, you know how in demand your time can be um, with school and holiday events. Uh, and these can make things difficult to get good writing time. So today we're going to look at ways to get back some of that writing time so that we don't lose it during the holidays. That's a good plan. I think I could use some of my own advice right now. <laughs> so what like, what tips do you have? Like, What's the first thing that you would do to get back into the swing uh, during our busy holiday season? Well, for one, I think you have to look for... Um, Little bits of time. It might not always work at the same time that it always did in the past. So um, I look for little pockets of time. And that's when I would probably do something like a writing sprint. Ooh. Do we want to talk about what those Ooh. are? Yeah, yeah, because I, I enjoy writing sprints quite a bit. Okay, so a writing sprint is... You set your clock, a timer, for whatever you want to do it. Some people will do it 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 I know some people that sprint for an hour, but that seems more like a marathon to me. So I personally <laughs> to go for usually 20 to 30 minutes. And um, I turn off the sound on my phone and on my computer, and you just write fast, and you don't stop. You just write as fast as you can. You don't worry about um, typos or anything. You're just getting your ideas flowing on the paper as fast as possible. Is that what you call a writing sprint, too? Yeah, that's what I call a writing sprint. Um, and I, have, I use apps. I'm, I'm like the king of apps. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I, have this, I have this app called Pomodoro Time. So I'll use like Pomodoro Time, and I'll set like 25 or 30 and – then um, it's kind of cool because the app lets you break down, like put your breaks in there so I can schedule myself to write for a certain amount of time Then I can give myself a five or 10 minute break, the next sprint, five or 10 minute break, the next sprint. And what I love about writing sprints is you can actually load up the word count really fast. For sure. And yeah, the breaks, I do the breaks too as well. And um, I work at home, so I end up going and doing things like, ooh, can I wash a pan really quick or switch the laundry <laughs> around and then just back to the computer again? <laughs> I don't know how much of a break that is, but at least you feel like, especially with the holidays too, you feel like you can hurry and knock out whatever little chore, wrap a present, order a present, or, you know, sometimes you could time it with your cookies, your baking. Ooh, that's a great idea. See, I never thought about that. I never thought that, hey, you know what, I can do a writing sprint, wrap a gift, bake some cookies, writing sprint, you know, that's a great idea, actually, because now you're, I'm killing two birds with one stone, and I'm not losing any writing time. Exactly. I do that with the washing machine sometimes, too. I'll time it with the washing machine. I can't get up till it turns off. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, something else that I like to do with writing sprints, too, and I discovered it a couple years ago, and I did Nano, was using Twitter. Um, getting, together, yes. getting together with a bunch of writers on Twitter and just using the hashtag writing sprint to kind of lure people in hey anybody want to do a writing sprint and use the hashtag and then you get all these people who say yeah yeah let's do it and then you know we're writing 25 minutes and then we're kind of reporting back into each other so the accountability helps me to write too yeah that's fun and i've actually made some good writing friends on twitter doing that and we kind of will go find each other too before we start up so it's kind of a little core group of us but yeah it's that it's a great tool yeah now with writing sprints you know you um, the distractions like how do you stay from being distracted in the midst of a sprint because you know of course you, you always got your phone you've got 
just this going on, that going on? How do you stay focused in a writing sprint so that you definitely keep your flow? So I find that sounds draw me away more than anything. So um, I found that if I turn off the notifications on my phone or my, and actually not turn them off, but I just turn the sound off on my phone completely. And then um, because I have a daughter at school, I like to keep an eye on it just in case the school calls or something. I know some people are worried about things like that. So just for my own peace of mind, I can have my phone face up beside me, but with the sound off, if I see a call float up or a text float up, I can glance at it and say, oh, that's so-and-so, We that does not meet my attention right now, and I can bring it back. If it made a sound, though, I'm compelled to do something with it. So for me, it's just getting rid of the dings and, and stuff like that that are going to distract me. And then some people have to turn off their internet. I don't. I just tell myself I can't go there. <laughs> and then I don't. Yeah. But one thing is remind yourself if you think of something you need to look up, like a research, just make a note and whatever app or whatever you're using, I'll just make a little note or put something in highlights of look this up later. And then I'll go back later and fill in the blanks of those things that needed researched. Now, do you find like, as a writer that writing sprints make you a lot more disciplined as a writer like like once you have done a few here and there like you get more disciplined with your standard writing like you get used to turning things off you get used to shutting out distractions you get used to not editing your work as you go along you ever find that too yeah i, I think they get me more focused if i can just to make myself do that in fact i'll, I'll have full disclosure i have gotten a little off of these things lately and i'm like ooh, i need a major tune-up right now yeah. um because yeah i'm much more productive if i'm doing those things and uh and just doing straight writing and then like going back for the research and stuff is that what you were asking me yeah just if it makes you just more more honed in and focused in your own writing like beyond like like if you're not just doing a sprint but it teaches you discipline for writing so that you learn to turn off distractions when you actually do write outside of a writing sprint Yes. Okay. Yes. I get you. Yeah. Cause you've kind of set up, you know, people talk about good sleep hygiene. It's like good writing hygiene you, you, <laughs> have, to, that you have to do to, to make it the best. And yeah. And I think if you're consistent with those things, it, it does make you more disciplined and over time as you get used to it. Yeah, dude, there, there's so much fun, uh, just to be able to get the words out. I remember when I was writing my book doing the writing sprints, by the time I'd done like three or four sprints, I was shocked that I had like 3000 words. I'm like, Holy cow. This is like, like an hour and 20 minutes, hour and 30 minutes, and I've got like 3,000 words on the page that I probably wouldn't have had had I just sat down and tried to force myself to write. <laughs> Winning! <laughs> yeah, because I think the cool thing about writing sprints also, with as far as being a productivity hack, is it, it forces you to turn off that internal editor. Right. Oh, my gosh. Yes, that is huge to, to knock that off because otherwise you're questioning everything you write down or you're like, oh, my gosh, this – scene is dragging on forever what's gonna make it up so and I guess you and I come at it from different places I mean you're a nonfiction writer and I'm a fiction writer so um proof that it can work for both of those scenarios too yeah like how does it work for a, a fiction writer like can you write scenes that fast depends on the day and the scene <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I mean most if I'm doing really good writing sprints, usually within 40 minutes, I can bust out at least a thousand words. Wow. And so, you know, it kind of depends on the scene and what's happening in it. And um, But yeah, sometimes I move from scenes or a whole chapter or, you know, it, it just kind of depends on what I'm working at in the story. But what other hacks do you have? Well, back to looking for pockets of time. Sometimes we're not sitting at home and... Um, you know, having time to sit down and doing a full on sprint. But this time of year, we end up running a lot of errands and um, being out and about a lot. So I find if I have a little notebook with me or which is something I did more when I first started writing with the notebook thing. But now I tend to use my phone more. I know you and I are pretty similar in that yeah. regard. And so now I tend to use Evernote in my phone because I can go and type ideas or I can type up full scenes depending on how I want to go about it, I can outline a scene in there or I can do full on writing and it syncs back to my laptop. So the notes that I make in Evernote, if I'm standing in line at the grocery store or waiting for a doctor's appointment or whatever, they'll, they'll sync back to my laptop and then I can copy and paste them into wherever my main document is and stuff. So that makes it pretty efficient um, for 
finding little pockets of time when I'm waiting somewhere. Yeah. It's ironic that we're always waiting and, and we're like, man, I, I would love to be able to sit down and write right now. Or I'd like to be able to have an hour to write. And it's like when you think about all the pockets of time you have during the course of the day, you probably have one or two hours of time that's just unused that you could be writing. For sure. For sure. And instead of being annoying, annoyed by your waiting or stuck somewhere, it's actually look at it as a gift. <laughs> yeah, I know. I do it all the time. Like I'll take my kids you know, to the playground. And they'll run around for an hour, and I'm like, dude, I'm just going to sit here, and I'm going to write for this whole hour while you run around. I tell them, hey, I'll be on this bench over here if anybody needs me, and I'll just write for that hour. And it's like, man, this is easier. Like you said, the grocery store, you know, you're standing in line at the grocery store. You pop out your phone. You can type a few things in Evernote. I mean, no matter where you go, you get, kids got a Christmas concert. I mean, you get there. You always have to get there an hour early anyway. And so you're sitting right. in the you're sitting in the lobby for an hour, you know, and people are chattering and you can write for, you know, 20, 30 minutes. If you're not feeling social, I'd have trouble in that scenario. I'd want to talk to <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, no, we've had that discussion before. I'm like, you know, oh if you go out in public, I'm gonna talk. <laughs> yeah, because you know, we're the two extroverted writers in the world. I know. <laughs> But yeah, no, I think, you know, using apps like Evernote, um, you've got, if you use an iPhone, even the native notes app in iPhone syncs back to your, if you're, if you're on a Mac ecosystem, it'll sync back to your um, iPad, it'll sync back to your laptop or your, your iMac. So you can use the native notes app. Um, There are so many different apps that you can use. I mean, Microsoft Word, you can use Microsoft Word and store things in the cloud drive. You can use the Google, uh, the Google Drive and Mm -hmm. Google Docs in your phone. So there are a lot of really cool apps that you can use in your phone that sync back to a larger ecosystem on your desktop or your laptop. So. Yeah, for sure. So there's something for everyone there. It's just, it doesn't, you don't have to be using an iDevice. It can, there's something for everything. Yeah, there's so many ways. But yeah, take back that, those pockets of time, you know, no more road rage and frustration. You can write. Yep. <laughs> we just brought a little peace into the world. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Yeah, yeah, using time wisely. There's plenty of time to write during the course of the day that you didn't think of. For sure. So You just have to be looking for it. What other tips do we have for the busy the busy season? Well, we, well, we were talking about goals, um, setting some reasonable goals, which um, this time of year your goals might be slightly condensed than maybe other times of the year, knowing you know, if you were expecting too much out of yourself or when there's a lot of extra stuff going on, it can be frustrating. And I know when I start struggling to reach goals, sometimes I, I get a little dramatic and it's like, fine, I can't do it at all. <laughs> um, so maybe trying to set reasonable goals. Um, we have down here just as few as 350 words a day. It's 10,000 words in a month, which is quite a few when you look at it. Um, that's That's some significant writing right there. So seeing what works for you, you probably have a feeling of how many words you can write. So generally, I'd like to aim for more like a thousand words a day for me, but something like right now, 500 might be enough. It kind of depends on where I'm at in my book. Yeah. Um, If it's right at the beginning and I'm figuring things out, I'm not crushing huge word counts, but I'm making some pivotal decisions up front or if I'm doing more research or if you're in the editing stage you know you're not necessarily cranking out words there you're needing to read and fiddle with things so you could say I'm going to do this amount of time a day of editing or a certain amount of pages kind of depending on how you like to measure things oh no you're not totally agree and then just knowing your schedule you know you know your schedule you know what's going on on what day Mm -hmm. you know you probably may not be able to write on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day so being able to to plan your writing around your life so that you don't get frustrated because I've been in that place where I've got this expectation I'm going to write today and it's going to be great and then something goes Jeez. Wrong. <laughs> something happens you're so defeated <laughs> you, you do you do you feel horrible you're like oh, I was supposed to write today and you just I feel like such a hack again you know And something else I think about, because this is something I forget to do, but to celebrate some small successes. So, you know, you were just talking about sometimes you miss a day and and we're really good at beating ourselves up. But I know personally, I'm not so good about lifting myself up. So when I've had, you know, three or four days of great hitting my goals or surpassing them or whatever, I need to give myself a little high five and a little extra time to sit down with a glass of wine in a book or, you know, something to treat myself to a job well done. So, cause you know, we, it's 
for at least you and me, it kind of depends. Everybody's situation is different, but we're our own bosses. And so we don't have somebody to come in and go, way to go, Chris. You <laughs> did it today. You know, you yes. out of the park. You kind of have to do that for yourself. And, um, we all, we all need our atta girls and atta boys. So definitely celebrate the small successes. Yeah, definitely. And then, like you said, knowing to plan around things. And so if your goal is 500 words a day and you know, you're going to miss a day because of school concerts and different things, then you just say, okay, well, I'm going to average those words out for a whole week instead of for, a, you know what I mean? You kind of take yeah, what you yeah. want your whole number to be and stretch it out. Yeah, yeah, because typically our thing to do is like, it's kind of like exercise. Okay, I missed a workout today. I need to do double the workout tomorrow, you know, and then you become twice as defeated the next day. So, yeah. Right. I mean, so <laughs> just a bigger hole. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, stretching it out is a great way to, to get your words out. And you don't have to pound out as many words. And then the next day, you can just spread it out over the course of a week or even two weeks. You know, we talked about writing sprints in the beginning, being able to take time to mm -hmm. write for 25 minutes at a time. Your words add up uh, within an hour, within two hours. Yep. Using using phone apps and notebooks, being able to take advantage of pockets of time, planning, planning those down times. So if you know you're going to go to a concert for your kids or you know that you've got a lunch break or whatever the case may be, you can pop out your phone and you can write during those times and still get your words in for the day and keep your words uh, moving towards finishing your project. And then lastly, we talked about setting reasonable goals, you know, celebrating your successes, deciding what your word count's going to be, and then making sure that you try to stick it out and not get discouraged if you miss a day or two, but taking some of those words and spreading them out over the course of whatever days you have left to make sure that they get done. So hopefully these tools will help you uh, to be a better writer during the holiday season. And if you have any other cool tools or tip ideas, be sure to leave a comment with the episode. You'll find the episode on readywritelaunch.com. Uh, if you need anything from me, you can contact me there. And if you'd like to contact Kayla directly, you can find Kayla at Kayla, K-A-Y-L-A, at KaylaDawnThomas.com. And you can contact her on Twitter also at Kayla Dawn Writes. So we will talk to you next time, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.